In this tutorial, we're going to make a game where two cats race across the keyboard. Using keys on this side and this side of the keyboard, two different players will control their cats. And when they hit the keys as fast as they can, well, I got to start the game. When they hit the keys as fast as they can, they'll have a race. And the faster person on the keyboard wins. Let's get started. We're going to use the version of Scratch that runs in a browser. So we'll have to open the browser we want to use. So first you want to go down to the menu, click on that, go to internet, click on that. And then we could use a lot of different browsers. Uh, but the browser we want to use is the Brave browser. Yeah, on our systems it's faster. So click on that. When the browser opens in our centers, it'll go to Scratch automatically. You'll know you're in Scratch because it'll have the Scratch address, scratch.mit.edu at the top. First thing I want you to do is click Create. After clicking Create, it'll always open with this tutorial. Go ahead and watch those on your own time at home. We encourage it, but for now just close it by clicking the X. In this tutorial, your job is going to be to find the things that I show you. So. I might start with something like this, a one flag click block. And then your job is going to be to see which one of the category colors best matches the color of what I'm showing you. Click on it and then find the block and bring it into your own programming environment so we end up coding the same game. Okay, so if you have any questions, ask your instructor, but let's get started. Okay, so your first block is the one flag click block. Uh, we needed a block that's going to trigger a code to run under it when this flag is clicked. So that's what we're going to start with. So go ahead, find this category, and find the block and drag it into your coding area. Okay, so your next block is this one, the go-to block. When you use the go-to block, it makes your scratchy cat character, the one we're programming, go to different places on the screen. You might have different numbers inside of these two input boxes, but that doesn't matter. Just find the go to X and Y box and put it underneath your when flag clicked. So before I give you a new block, I'm going to show you how you can get these numbers for this command because we need Scratchy not to be in the center of the screen. So what you're going to do is you're going to take Scratchy, click on him and drag him up here. Oh, just so let's say his elbow is uh, touching the border of the screen. Once you drop him, you'll be given numbers here and here as X and Y coordinates. This one, negative 210, you can act, will go in here, so type negative 210. And this other number, the Y number, 106, will go in here. And that's it. Put those two numbers in those two spots. Okay, get ready to find a new block, and it's this one. So it's the say block, it's purple. Uh, so look for a purple category and it'll read like this, say hello for two seconds by default. So find that one and move it into your code. Okay, so you can see that I brought in a video of me with my mouse here. And that's because we're going to duplicate this code block by right clicking on it. Right clicking is the button on this side. So if you click on the button on the right, you'll get a menu every time and you wanna click duplicate so we get another one of these and then right click on it again and then left click duplicate so we get a third. So we want to end up with three of these and just put them underneath. So do that please. And here's how I want you to change what it says. I want you to change the first hello to get ready. And we're going to say that for one second. The second one is going to say get set, which we'll also say for one second. And the last one will say go, which we'll also say for one second. So make those changes and then we'll go on to help you find the next block. Okay, are you ready to find your next block? It's going to be this one. It's going to be a kind of an orange color and it's a set my variable to zero is what it'll read. So find that please. So variables are names that contain values. So right now this variable just has the name my variable. I want you to put it actually up here at the top. I like to set the variable values right away. Um, and let's change this value to two. So now the name my variable will hold the value of two. So do that please. 
Before we leave this variable and we give you a new one, let's go over into the variable section where you drag this from, and we're going to rename this variable. So just go to this block, the My Variable block, right click on it, and click on Rename Variable. There, I just want you to name it to STEP, STEP because uh, the number that this holds is a step value for how big of a step our cat is taking each time he walks. So after you put step in there, click OK, and you're done. Let's take a second and go ahead and test your code. Go ahead and drag your cat anywhere else onto the screen, and then hit the green flag. If everything works right, your cat should pop into the starting position and say, ready, set, go. That's all it should do right now, but if it behaves in any different way, ask your instructor over for a little help. So far, the code we've written is all statements. It's just run through code. The computer runs through it, executes it one at a time, and then it stops. But we need something that's going to make the computer go over code again and again. And that's the next block I want you to find. It's this one, the forever loop. So find the forever loop and stick it right under here. So our next block we're going to bring in is going to help us see what the forever loop does. So that block is this one change x by 10. So go ahead and find that. It's blue just like this one so it'll come from the same category. Find it and when you do find it I want you to bring it in above the forever loop first. Okay now that you've found this put it above the forever loop I want you to hit the green flag and you'll see that he says get ready to get set go and he moves only one tick. Now let's make a change. I'm going to pull the forever loop off so I can uh, move this. We always got to work on changes from the bottom up. And then put the change X inside. Make that change. Okay, so hit the stop uh, button there if your code's already running. And then hit the green flag. You'll still get get ready, set, go. But this time, our character will run all the way to the right. And that's because we have the change X in the forever loop. So this code is getting executed over and over and over again, moving it further and further to the right. I hope you understand. If not, ask your instructor. Your next code block, though, let me show you that. That'll be this one. Find this purple block and put it right underneath the change X by. Now, instead of just explaining what this code block does, I'm going to show you again. Uh, go to your uh, program, click the green flag, uh, wait through the get ready, set, go. And now when you watch your character, he actually looks like he's running. He's got an animation to him. And that's because of what I can show you here. Go ahead and click on your costumes tab here. So under costumes, you can see uh, that Scratchy isn't just one picture, he's two. And by going to next costume, we're constantly flipping between these two costumes. Go ahead and go back to code. So you probably remember from our game intro that our character isn't supposed to just be programmed to go forward. He's supposed to go forward when the A and S keys are hit. And then later on, a new character will go forward with the K and L keys. But let's take care of the A and S keys now. So for that, I need you to find a new code block. And that's this one, the if code block. Now that you've found the block, let me show you where to put it. We want this if then inside the forever loop, but we want the two items that make us move inside of it so that we only move if a certain condition is met. So go ahead, move the if block in as you see it here. All right, the next block I want you to find is the one that's going to help us satisfy this condition space, this hexagonal empty space that the if condition needs. So go ahead and find this block, if space pressed. Okay, now that you've found this block, let's put it to work. Just grab it and put it into the hexagonal space. You can see it's also hexagonally shaped, so it's kind of meant to go there. Uh, the other thing I want you to do, so that's step one, the other thing I want you to do is click on this down arrow and select A, so that only if A is pressed on the keyboard, then we do these things. So make those changes, please. Now, the next block I want you to find is this one. It's the variable block for step. It holds the variable value we set earlier up here. But go ahead and find it, please, and then I'll show you where to put it. So our step value is actually how far we want to go each time we hit A. We only want it to go two pixels, so that's why we set it to two, and that's what the value that this holds right now. So go ahead and put that right in there with the change X by block. 
Now I want to show you a little bit more about duplicating. So duplicating a block like this one, right here, we want to duplicate all this. So to do that, we need to uh, click right at the top of the block we want to copy with a right click. So right click on that and then click on duplicate. We'll get all of it up and from the top of the block to the bottom of the if block and just put it in right underneath. You should have it looking like this when you're done. Duplicating saves us a ton of coding because now all we have to do to get the S working is click on this A and scroll down till we get to S and boom. Now we've got a character that will go forward when we hit the A and S keys. And you can go ahead and test that out in your code by hitting the green flag. So now your cat is racing okay, but he doesn't really know that he's hit the finish line and the game is won. So I want you to put in or find another one of these, sorry, another one of these if blocks. And we're going to put it in here and we're going to check, use this if block to see if we've actually reached the end of the race. So this if condition is going to need a way for us to detect the finish line. So I just want to point out this. You can do this little experiment too. In this x value, Go ahead and put negative 230 and hit enter. And you'll see that Scratchy the cat goes to the start line. But if we change this value, and you can do this as well, to positive 230, then he's going to go to the finish line. So basically, we just need to detect an x value of 230 or greater to know we're at the finish line. So that's the block I want you to find. I want you to find this exposition block. So having the exposition block is good. If you click on it, you can see it gives you the value of where Scratchy is at, uh, but it can't be put in here on its own. It needs something to go into. So I need you to find this block as well. So this is a mathematical operator block. It has a greater than symbol in it. So and you'll see it's round, just like the shape of x position. So x position will go in here, and we're going to change this value to 230. So make those changes, please. All right, and you probably guessed this one without any trouble. This now has the hexagonal shape it needs to go in here. So now we're detecting if the x position of our character is greater than 230, then we know we're at the finish line, and then our finish line stuff here can happen inside. So just put that in there, please. So the first thing we need to do is stop Scratchy from running. He's reached the finish line after all. And the easiest way for us to do that is to make this step value, the value of two he takes for each step, to zero. So I want you to find this block, set step to zero, and put it right in here. And that'll stop Scratchy from running. And finally, let's let Scratchy celebrate by saying something. So find this block. You found it once before, actually a few times before. Uh, put it in under the step value, and let's have him say, I won, for two seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and test our code. Click the green flag, it should say get ready, set, go, and you should be able to race all the way across using the A and S keys. Uh, when you get to the end, we're expecting this to say to stop, and say I won. So if you're getting any different behavior than that, ask your instructor over for a little help with some bug fixing. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's no fun racing myself. I want someone to race. Well, we're going to make that really easy. You're just going to right click on Sprite 1, our first cat, and duplicate him. Now we have a second cat called Sprite 2. So do that, please. There's only a couple quick changes we need to make to Sprite 2 to make him work differently, and that's change the keys that are pressed. So instead of A and S, we're going to change A into K and S into L. So make those changes, K and L for A and S. And then finally, the we're going to make them look different. So go ahead and click on his costume tab. And the purple fill color we get by default is fine. Just click on this paint bucket tool and click on every part of him that is orange. And we'll turn that purple. And then once you've got that done, just go ahead and click back on code. There's still one thing we have to change. Uh, when we hit start, he's going to go to the exact same position as the other cat. We want him to start lower down. 
Uh, so maybe a y value of negative 90, negative 93. So we'll just find the y value here and change that to like negative 90. So make a change like that. And that's it. Go ahead and test your game. Click play. If you want to play in full screen mode, just click on here. And then uh, one player will race with A and S. The other player will race with K and L. And oh, look at that. Our purple guy is flickering off and on. So there's a bug we can see if you can fix on your own. So that's the end of our tutorial. Uh, I only have one challenge for you, and that's our second scratchy cat here. When you hit the mouse, when you hit the K and L buttons, he flickers between two colors, purple and orange. Can you fix that without your instructor's help? If you do need your instructor, though, feel free to call them over, um, and they can help you out, or you can call them over just to brag about how you fixed it on your own. Okay, thanks for joining us for this tutorial. Hope to see you for the next one.